Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this module, we're going to start looking at computer vision. So we're going to get into convolution neural networks and see how to use those to both recognize individual things in images and also potentially like count things in images, generate numbers from a image. The link to this notebook is in the course description. I'm going to go ahead and open it in Colab so that all the LaTeX displays correctly the equations and also we can run things if needed. So we make use of a Python library called Pillow and that should be already installed. It was part of the list of packages to install for the class and also it's installed by default in Colab. So when you load an image into Pillow or to something else like this, it's a series of RGB values, the pixels. So here you can see that 199, 213, 240. So this is one individual RGB color, red, green, and blue, 0 to 255 on each of these. And that is what actually goes into the neural network. Usually you're going to normalize these to some degree so that they're between 0 and 1. But this is just a big grid, rows and columns, of the actual image data from an individual image. Here I'm loading a picture of Brookings Hall from Washington University, which you can see here. We can easily display these in Google Colab and see. Now, you can also build up a image entirely from programmatically down to the pixel. And that's what we're going to do here. I'm showing you that I can basically create a numpy array, height by width, 64 by 64, unsigned int 8, so that means 0 to 255, and I'm going to create some boxes. I'm going to use loops to create these boxes, but it's actually faster and more performant to use numpy, but the code is a little less obvious in NumPy. So we're going to start with loops and then later in this, this part we'll see how to actually do that in NumPy. Here what we're doing is looping over the rows and the columns. So we're looping over 32 rows and 32 columns. And data is that big matrix array that I have for the entire image. So here what I'm doing is taking the first 32 rows and the next 32 columns, so a, a rectangle, that is one-fourth of this area. So half of 64 is 32, half of the other 64 is 32. So we're, we're filling up the first quadrant of that. And we're filling it with yellow, 255, 255, red and green. Those two values make up yellow. Then we do something similar for red, but what we're doing here is I'm offsetting the row. So we're going down 32. And then we go over and across both 32 and finally just, just over 32. So you can see that red where we move down is here, yellow, and we, we basically built that image from the pixel up. And you can do that sort of thing in neural networks. We'll see in the next module, when we do GANs, you actually get pixel by pixel out of the neural network and you build it up pixel by pixel from the neural network. So the neural network is actually drawing it. So this is basically how you do that. You create the array and then you specify that the encoding is RGB. There are other ways to encode images, but RGB is, is the most common. You can also use an image as a starting point and make those same changes. This is great for augmented reality, where you have some sort of an image and maybe the neural network is going to put boxes around people's faces or something like that. We'll see that, we'll see an example of that in this module as well when we start to look at YOLO. But here we are loading an image, so we're loading Brookings Hall again. I will also mention this line here, if you're loading images over the, the network, this is very important to put in because that identifies what type of browser is downloading it. I was getting security faults because a lot of websites require this now. So, And unfortunately, I don't know why Python doesn't default to something, but this is, this is how it works. So we're going to get the image, we're going to display the rows and columns, but now what I'm going to do is 
create another array that I'm going to copy it into, and I'm going to loop across all the rows and columns. Again, we could do this faster with NumPy, but I'm showing you literally what's going on kind of at the looping level. I find the loops a little bit easier to understand than some of the NumPy notation, at least until you get used to the NumPy notation. And what I do is one by one, I take the average color on each pixel. So I'm taking the red, green, and blue, averaging it just into one, and then putting it into the new array that I am creating, the new matrix. And then we create it, just like you've seen before from RGB, and every pixel has been averaged. And this results in a grayscale-esque image. This is not truly grayscale because true grayscale, you do a weighted average. You don't just take, not red, green, and blue are not all even. They are a little bit different. So that's why this is a little bit harsh of a grayscale image. Not quite what a black, an old black and white camera would take. But it shows how we can modify these uh, pixels. You also will want to standardize images sometimes. You'll often use a data generator for that, and we'll be seeing those in this module as well. But for now, just how you would literally use Pill to Pillow to standardize these is like this. Notice I have three images here. We're gonna crop each of these to being square. This is similar to one of the assignments that you have in this course, you have to make them square, but use a little different technique than I have here. And we're going to, one by one, open open the images, load them. And again, I'm using the user agent because we are pulling these images across the internet. And I'm going to resize them all. Well, I'm going to make them square first, and then I'm going to resize them to 128 by 128. So this making square, what we do there is we find the minimum height and width, because if it's if it's wide, then the minimum is going to be the height, and we're going to make the width the same as the height. We are then going to basically center it so that the cropping rectangle is centered. That's why we're basically taking, taking each of these divided by two. And then we're going to crop based on the pixels, the left and the top and the right and the bottom. Just crop that one rectangle there. So we make them square, then we one by one resize them down to 128 by 128, anti-aliasing, that means modify pixels that are near other pixels just to make it look more even as it was as it was resized. Usually scaling down that's less of a problem, but if you're if you're expanding, that helps to fill in the gaps a little bit as you're as you make it larger. Also too, as far as scaling, this is a topic that neural networks are used for to get amazing results. Some of the televisions use this. If you have a 4K television, but you're just watching HD video source, it can upscale it to your television. And, and here are the standardized images. I took all of these buildings that were all different sizes of images. If you go, say, download a bunch of images off of Flickr, which is a common source of, to get images from for machine learning, you're going to get all kinds of sizes. And machine learning also likes to have square images usually. It's not required, but it does make things easier. We can also do sort of an augmented reality thing where I'm going to add some noise to an image. Here I create a function called add noise, and I'm basically getting an array, I'm copying the array of the image, and I'm getting the rows and columns, and then I am going to create the size of the noise that I'm adding. As you can see an example here, these boxes. I'm just throwing these boxes all over the image. And I want these boxes to be about 1 20th the size of an image, just so that it's consistent. That way, if you have a really high resolution image, the boxes are still about the same size. They're 1 20th of, of the image, height and width. Then we loop over this whole thing. We create a random integer, and we take the rows and columns minus the size, because I don't want something partially off the edge of the image. And here is how you use NumPy to put these little rectangles in. You'll notice the notation here. So we're going to start at whatever the Y is, and we're going to fill up to Y plus the size. So that's the, the rows. And then we do the same thing for the columns with X. We fill from X up to X plus the size. And we set it to zero. We're doing all kinds of linear algebra here, because if you think about it, that is really a, a RGB value. So we, we could put in just brackets zero, zero, zero for red, green, and blue, 
But since I'm filling this into it, and there's three elements, the three, the red, green, and blue that that zero is going into, that, that just puts it into all three of them. So this is, I think, the cleaner, better way to do it than looping across the ranges like I showed earlier. And then all we're going to do is load the image, add the noise, and display the image. And there you see. So this is a form of augmentation that we are doing. We're adding noise to the image to just to show that we can alter it. This is how you can do augmented reality. I don't know, you could make snowflakes fall down and render a bunch of frames, certainly things like that. Now, if you wanna pre-process a bunch of images, because sometimes I like to do this. I, I might download a whole bunch of images from Flickr and I want to just standardize those and resave them so that I, I have the new files. And maybe when I download them from Flickr, there are a whole bunch of PNGs and JPEGs and some are grayscale, some are not. I just wanna standardize that so that they're all the same. And what I am doing here is I am downloading some paper clips from a data set that I created that has a bunch of paper clips, images of paper clips on pieces of paper, like you see here. And it, normally you'll try to count the paper clips, and we'll see examples of that. But here we're just pre-processing it. And the paper clips are all PNGs, which are kind of big. So we're gonna also convert them into JPEGs, which are smaller. So we're going to download the paper clip images to a directory called source, which if you're using Colab, it's under content clips, paper clips. And then we're going to output the results to something called clips processed. So we unzip the zip file that we downloaded and get everything squared away on, on the hard drive. And we're gonna use a couple of functions here. We're gonna use the make square that we saw earlier. And then we're going to also use scale, which basically just shrinks it or grows it, depending on whatever you're asking for. And then standardize, make sure that it's in red, green, blue. So if you're dealing with some grayscale images, it converts them all to RGB. Because some of your machine learning algorithms, most notably StyleGAN, which we're going to use towards the end of this module, will error if you give it a mix of full color and grayscale. And then fail below is just saying, okay, fail an individual image if it's below a certain resolution. So we're gonna grab all of the JPEGs. Oh, my mistake, I said earlier the paper clips were PNGs, they are JPEGs. So we're going to loop through and download, or we already downloaded them, but we're gonna process every JPEG. And we are going to read in the JPEG. And these are on our local disk, so we're not pulling them across the internet. We'll standardize it so that they're all full color, and not grayscale. We're going to crop it to be square and we're going to scale it. We're going to shrink it down to 128 by 128. So this makes all of these images of uniform size. And this is very useful to do when you're pulling in a lot of external data from somewhere like Flickr or captured from security cameras, captured from video, wherever it's coming from. All right, thank you for watching this video. And if you're interested more in this course, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and give me a like if this video was useful to you. Thanks for watching.